powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. Three female suspects now face felony charges after a brutal caught on camera attack of a 15 year old Billings girl. Take a look. This graphic video is circulating on social media, but the attack happened last month, showing Madison McKnight laying on the pavement, trying to protect her face and head as two other girls kicked and stomped her. Now, Billings police say they've issued notices to appear to two 17 year olds and 19 year old Dylan Rushman Douglas. All three girls face felony robbery or accountability to robbery charges. None have been booked into jail because of the jail's new policy regarding COVID-19. Now tonight we hear from Madison's mother who tells Q2's Andrea Lutz her daughter is recovering from both physical and emotional wounds. It, it makes me angry that somebody could to, to do this. And anger is just one emotion Deborah Miller feels about the attack on her daughter Madison. It's not necessary to treat another human being like that. I bet. There's no other way to describe the video now seen and shared dozens of times on social media. <laughs> it's brutal. Just kind of ran at her and, and started beating her. And I mean, she lay there on the ground just like you know, not even resisting, not, you know, not even giving anything back to them in regards to physical violence. Miller says all of this happened one night in late February in the parking lot of Albertsons on Central and 6th. The lack of morality that these people have and the lack of concern for another human being, regardless of what precipitated this whole thing, is just astonishing to me. She says Madison doesn't know the girls who attacked her, but that night called for a ride from another girl she does know. They had no remorse. They were laughing. They were videotaping it. They were, you know, thinking that this was funny. Madison was left bleeding and swollen. After the attack, she was able to get up and walk for help. Her whole right side of her face was completely swollen beyond recognition, but... The physical wounds will heal, the emotional ones is what we're struggling with right now. And that's where Miller's biggest worry for her daughter lies, healing. It was a very disturbing thing for her, you know, and she's not one to open up and share emotions with me. It's very difficult for her. Healing for everyone. It completes, completely, like, it devastates me, like, there's not a night that doesn't go by that I don't cry for my child. Miller believes the mental health system in Billings has failed her daughter, and she's frustrated by how long it took police to file charges. But regardless of all that, she wants everyone in the community to know violence like this can never be justified. I just want to say that we have to come together as a community and not allow this thing to happen. If you see something, say something. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. All three suspects must appear in district court on or before April 12th. Again, Billings police say and believe more charges are likely. Well, 24 more Montanans have tested positive with COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. There are currently 241 confirmed cases across the state. That's up 14 from this morning alone. The total number of deaths remains at five. As of tonight, there are 22 Montana counties with confirmed cases and 24 patients have been hospitalized. Yellowstone County saw one new positive as of an hour ago, bringing our total to 35. Gallatin County now has 40% of the state's confirmed cases as it reaches 93 positive tests. In Wyoming, there are now 150 confirmed cases. More than 1,800 people have been tested and no deaths are reported. The most cases in Laramie County with 36, Teton County at 29, and Fremont County with 26. A TSA agent based at the Missoula International Airport is among the 17 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Missoula County tonight. The screening officer works the afternoon shift at the Missoula Airport and last worked on March 25th. Over the past 14 days, the TSA reports 58 screening officers have tested positive for COVID-19 across the U.S. Well, the agency says it's working with the CDC along with the state and local health departments to monitor local situations and ensure safety.
Well, it's the start of what hoped to be the biggest economic recovery in U.S. history, an unprecedented public-private effort to mobilize Main Street and sustain the small business world through the COVID-19 pandemic. Q2's Jay Cohn joins us with details on what's being offered as the government pumps billions of dollars into a stalled economy. Well, they're not hanging out the free money signs yet, but if you qualify, that very well could be the case for thousands of small businesses across the country. The SBA's Paycheck Protection Program, all $349 billion of it, the fuel, if you will, for the nation's economic engine. Significant resources coming out of Washington, D.C. right now. Our job is to get those in the hands of, of employers, small businesses uh, in our community and throughout the state of Montana so they can start um, uh, looking forward to what recovery could look like you know, month, two months, three months, six months down the road. The operative word for this program, speed. Local lenders can use their own systems and processes to get this emergency capital into the hands of more than 30 million small businesses and their employees. The basic premise of that is to get some money into employers' hands to be able to pay employees uh, for the next eight weeks. And that's, that's the real goal behind this thing is to make sure that uh, employees are getting their paychecks. Western Securities' Mike Seppala says his bank hopes to begin start processing applications as soon as tomorrow, if possible. The money is not necessarily free. That You have to earn, there is a forgiveness portion to it, but you're going to have to earn that. Mm -hmm. And by, by that, I mean, as a, as a borrower, you're going to have to prove what your payrolls are. You're going to have to prove that you have those payrolls going forward during the next eight-week period. Um, and in order to, to be able to get the forgiveness on the debt. Another SBA program, Economic Injury Disaster Loans, as much as $2 million per business, now features an advance, a quick infusion of some $10,000 in cash within three days. Very important. What we've heard initially on two weeks ago was, man, I don't need another loan. I need cash today. And then we were getting concerned about the SBA process taking too long and those dollars not being available for weeks and weeks. The SBA heard that message, I think, and with the encouragement of Congress, now they have that advanced feature where they can get cash within a very short period of time. While the SBA finalizes all the rules and details, both Arviscal and Cepala say now's the time to get your paperwork in order, your tax statements, your payroll records, everything ready to go as soon as possible. In Billings, I'm Jay Cohn reporting for MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Jay. Now, more information, of course, at sba.gov or bigskyeconomicdevelopment.org, where you'll also find a step-by-step -step guide of resources available to small business owners. Well, filings for unemployment skyrocketed to record heights across the country last week. That number, more than 6.6 .6 .6 million which crushed the previous high of 3.3 million just set the week before. Unfortunately, Montana is no different. MTN's Mike Dennison has the latest state numbers, which have gone from just a handful a few weeks ago into the thousands. A mere month ago, new filings for jobless benefits in Montana stood at less than 100 for an entire week. Not anymore. In the past seven days, more than 23,600 Montanans have filed for new unemployment benefits. And the week before that, almost 17,000 Montanans did the same. The largest total claims filed in one day was last Friday, when almost 5,000 people who'd lost their jobs submitted the paperwork to get jobless benefits. And it hasn't dropped much since then, with new claims running anywhere from 3,400 to 4,000 per day so far this week. If there's any good news here, it's that weekly benefits will soon be increased and that self-employed people who are out of work should be able to get benefits as well. The stimulus package passed last weekend by Congress increases unemployment payments by $600 a week and makes self-employed workers eligible for jobless benefits. Those two benefits aren't available yet, but the state labor department says once it gets guidance from the feds on how to implement those changes, it will backdate the benefits to either March 15th or March 23rd. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News.
Thanks so much, Mike. Now, information on how to file for benefits can be found on the State Labor Department's website. Well, COVID-19 and the stay-at-home order have added to school expenses with online classes and a lot of extra cleaning. School District 2 has received about $3.2 million in emergency funds. That's almost $2.5 million for the elementary schools and more than $700,000 for the high schools. The money comes from the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, or CARES Act. Superintendent Greg Upham says it will help pay for cleaning supplies along with technology and instructional materials. The list goes on and on, but it's a very welcomed boost, I can tell you that. The biggest thing for us is to try to determine how much gap we have with our students and where they should be and where they normally would be and where they are. We're working on that now, but you know, in the future, that could be being able to offer extended resources for students maybe that aren't demonstrating grade level proficiencies or meeting our benchmarks. About 90% of the $41.3 million Montana received went to schools across the state. The rest has been set aside for other emergency needs. Well, one group is bringing in the dough all to support students. After a fundraising challenge earlier this week, Billings Backpack Meals will be able to provide food for students at Easter. The program already gives breakfast and lunch to about 350 students on the weekends. With the stay-at-home order, the number of students needing meals is more than 1,200. It will take about $10,000 for five days of meals around Easter. One, a $1 challenge went out on Tuesday, and by Wednesday, $5,000 had been raised. That, along with food donations from Sodexo, brings the need to about $1,000. My goal was $200, and to know that people in the community were so eager to help. I think we're all, you know, feeling locked up and wanting to do something and not knowing what we can do and be a part. And so in that first 24 hours, we hit five grand and donations are still trickling in and some now are going directly to the foundation, which is fabulous, but it's super humbling and super exciting. And the Education Foundation for Billings Public Schools runs that Backpack Meals program. Still ahead on tonight's 530 News, there's a new hot spot in town that's tapping into ways you can still say cheers during this unfamiliar time. And later in sports, a special happy birthday shout out from Daughters of the Nile dance team. Along with the snow today, we started at 9 degrees first thing in the morning, ended up only 19 for a daytime high. It's got to get warmer, doesn't it? We'll tell you about that with the forecast coming up. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.